Um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to share. Well, I'll hold off on sharing my screen for a minute. My name is Christopher Legal. I am one of the faculty members in the Graphic Arts Technology Program. Um, the other faculty member is Pat Cheek. You should see him on your screen, too. Um, we're here to talk about the Graphic Arts Technology Program and um, some of the changes that we've made to prepare it to be fully online this fall. So um, I'm, I'm not big on, on um, ceremony and circumstance. So if you have a question, just go ahead and, and shout it out there. I'll be happy to answer as we go. Uh, let me share my screen. And we'll begin. Can everyone see my cursor moving? Yes, sir. All right, perfect. Um, this is the Graphic Arts Technology Program Information Session. We are part of Eastern Iowa Community Colleges. There's Clinton, Scott, and Muscatine. The Graphic Arts Technology Program historically has been located at the Clinton campus, but um, as you'll see in a moment, we're actually gonna be um, making it available online this fall and pretty much anyone within the district is welcome to take our classes. <clears throat> Maybe. Um, so what I'm gonna talk about today are, um, I'm gonna give, a, or is I'm gonna give a little bit of background about our program. Uh, I'm gonna talk about um, some of the uh, things related to admissions. In fact, I'm gonna pass it over to one of our advisors, Rob is here to help us out with that. Um, I'll introduce myself and the other faculty member a little bit more so you kind of know what our background is. Um, we're going to talk about the online um, delivery that we're going to be using this fall. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the costs, the curriculum, and then also some additional activities we do in the program, and then I'll open it up to questions. So does anyone have any questions? I'll take your silence as you are ready to go. Um, the Graphic Arts Program is a two-year Associates of Applied Science degree. That means that it's um, a career technical program. It's not an arts and science degree. We also have a one-year diploma option for students who, um, for whatever reason, choose to pursue that instead. And then starting this, or actually as of the spring, we added a certificate in photography. One of the things that we've uh, noticed over the years is we've had a number of students who have come into the program who are just interested in the photography component. And what we decided was, um, that's fine. We certainly uh, encourage students who want to do that to do that. But we um, decided that it, would be, it was time to really kind of think about what classes somebody might want to take or should take if they wanted to go in that direction. And now we have a, um, a nice little certificate that we can give to those students who um, want to pursue that. Um, a couple of years ago, we had a student who went through, um, they weren't planning on graduating for the program. They just wanted the photography parts of it. So they ended up taking those classes and then they ended up in um, Nashville uh, photographing um, everyone from Tim Tebow to some of the bands around or the acts around Nashville at that time, including Sugarland and, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's a, um, a great option for those students who are interested in, in doing that. And then finally, one of the things that we're also working on is a high school career academy so that um, students who are in the high schools can actually take our classes too. One of the nice things about having our classes online is that um, the curriculum is there. So um, I think it does make it a lot easier for uh, faculty in the high schools to uh, work with students to um, ha help them take our classes. But um, those are our four options. Maybe. Come on. Okay, so if you have any questions about admissions, I am not the best person to ask. Rob Schott is one of our advisors. He's worked very closely with our students over the years. Um, I'm going to turn it over to him to talk a little bit about that. Yep. Thanks, Christopher. Uh, so yes, so I'm one of the advisors here, and I'm the advisor currently who specifically works with the Graphic Arts program. Um, so if a student is interested in pursuing this program, really the first step um, would be to reach out. You can reach out directly to me, or if you reach out to your um, closest campus location, whether it be Scott Clinton or Muscatine, um, they'll get you connected either with me or with an advisor there. Um, but that's really the first step. Um, I'll put my contact information in the chat box. Um, and along with that, you would also want to fill out an application to the college on our website. There's no cost to do that. Uh, and indicate graphic arts as your program of interest. And then also be sure to file your 
uh, FAFSA at your earliest convenience if you haven't already. Um, I know there was a note on the slide about the last dollar scholarship. So for Iowa residents, this program is eligible for that. Uh, and it's a great opportunity. Essentially, all you have to do is follow your FAFSA. And then if um, you're eligible for it, um, which you are if you're enrolled full-time as a student coming straight out of high school or at least part-time as a um, student who's not just out of high school, um, it will basically cover your tuition expenses that aren't covered by any other federal grant opportunity. So it's awesome that this program is part of that. And I know um, we've had students benefit from that this year. So um, those would be the things I would review with you again in that my, our initial admissions meeting, um, but just kind of as a heads up. Okay. Thanks, Rob. I'm gonna share my screen again. Give me a moment. Uh, where to go? There it is. Okay. Um, a little bit about the faculty here in the program. Um, this is me over here before I shaved. This is Pat back here, and this is one of our art faculty. Um, uh, my name, as I said before, is Christopher Legal. I was actually born in Clinton, and uh, both my father and now my daughter are graduates from CCC. Uh, one of the nice things about um, having grown up here is I grew up across the street from people who worked at the college, and so it's always been a part of my life. Um, I worked, uh, or, um, I, after I graduated from high school, I, I worked in industry for a number of years. I went to Arizona State and ended up uh, doing some custom paint jobs on cars out there at the time. I also got a job um, working on um, uh, shooting concerts. Uh, I was a concert photographer for a while out there too. <clears throat> in addition to freelancing in graphic design. Um, so I photographed all the grunge and rock and roll and heavy metal bands that came through Phoenix back in the early nineties. Uh, I was working for a magazine out there, a music magazine at the time. Um, eventually I, I decided I wanted to move back to the Midwest. So um, I uh, moved to Madison, Wisconsin and worked for Newell Rubbermaid for a number of years while I was going to school at the UW Madison. Uh, I was working in their graphics department and doing a lot of other things there too. Um, Newell Rubbermaid is the company that owns Rubbermaid. So if you have worked or have Rubbermaid products in your kitchen, um, that's that same company. They also own Sharpie markers and um, a bunch of other companies too. And then after that, I worked in industry for a while. Um, so, well, I continued to work in industry for a while, um, but uh, eventually I came across a job posting to um, for an opening here at the college. And I applied for it and got it, and I've uh, been working here ever since. Um, Pat Cheek, on the other hand, I'll let him speak a little bit about his background as well. Yeah, yeah. My name is Pat Cheek. I have a background in art and design. And as a young kid, my uh, went to my aunt's house, who was a uh, she was a ceramicist and a painter, and and she worked for a studio photographer. She did uh, hand colored black and white photos. You know, so I got interested in photography. Her husband, my uncle, he would uh, retouch the black and white negatives with uh, pencils. And so now that this was the analog age and now we're into the digital age, but I have a master, a bachelor's degree in photography and a master of fine arts and art design. And I was lucky enough to take some design classes with Buckminster Fuller back in the seventies. And I was interested in getting a, um, a teaching position you know, that's why I got an MFA, but at the time there weren't any jobs and I had a young family and I needed a job. So I went in business for myself, started out doing screen printing. And back then there was no such thing as a graphic artist or graphic design. You know, you were called a commercial artist. So the, the term graphic designer has come along later on. And um, so back in the late nineties, I was always interested in teaching job. I went back to school in interactive multimedia, which you know Chris also has a background in that, and to become a, a a digital artist. And I got a job at the University of Illinois in Springfield in the media department, and doing CD-ROM authoring for their online program. And then I got I started teaching part time, and they ended up giving me a full time teaching job. And then uh, 15 years ago, I came to work at Clint. So Chris and I have been working together for 15 years, which has been been a good time for both of us. So I've got you know 20 years experience in business and 20 years experience teaching. 
Yeah, um, as Pat was saying, um, uh, I actually have a background in um, multimedia or whatnot too. I learned, I started back in the '90s. I started making websites right after the um, the web came along. So um, I, I've been around it for a long, long time. In fact, my first job here with the college was actually to um, run the the media department here at CCC. Uh, so I did some internal graphic design work. I worked a little bit on the uh, website. And um, yeah, about a year later, there was a job opening to teach on uh, in the graphic arts program. And I shifted over and have been teaching here ever since. But I've been here a little over 20 years. So, yep. <clears throat> okay, as I said before, starting this fall, the uh, graphic arts program will be completely online. So we've actually, over the years, attracted students from all over the country. We've had students, and even outside the country, um, we had a... Uh, one student from San Martin, which is a Caribbean island, but we've had students from Florida and California and from the East Coast who have um, actually somehow found our program and thought it was really interesting and, and uh, chosen to uh, pursue their associate's degree with us. So this fall, the plan is to um, have all of our classes completely online. There's no associated Zoom requirement outside of a, a couple of specific instances that we'll talk about more when you get into the program, but it'll be asynchronous, meaning that all the content will be online. Pat and I will be available to work with you. And, um, you know, so if you're working or if you have a family, uh, it'll make that um, going to school a lot easier for you uh, as well. Uh, one of the things that we've uh, started doing since the pandemic hit was <clears throat> we've been moving away from using textbooks in our courses. Uh, the re part, the, and there are a number of reasons for that. One of the problems that we've had with textbooks over the years, when you're teaching software like Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign and whatnot, and even web, the web to some extent, um, the software turns over so quickly, it's really hard to find a book that um, is as up to date as we'd like it to be when we're working with students. Um, so we have decided that we're going to start using LinkedIn, and we've been doing it this past year, um, as a replacement for the textbooks. We'll still supplement it with other information, but one of the great things about LinkedIn is um, they don't have the same production process to put out current content. In other words, once the video course is up there about Photoshop or whatever, um, if something changes or they need to make a correction, they can go in and edit specific videos within the course. So it's been really helpful for us. This, the, we found the uh, LinkedIn training uh, learning videos to be uh, very, um, very current, up to date. And uh, it's just been a very nice um, new direction for our program to take. <clears throat> there is still a lot of stuff that we'll supplement with um, um, off the web. Um, Pat and I will offer additional lecture and instruction as well. Um, there are a few courses that, um, as you can see there, that do still have textbooks, but there aren't that many of them. And one of the nice things about LinkedIn is because uh, we're not using textbook. Well, let me put it this way. I've always tried to keep a cap on the cost of textbooks for my courses at about $100. And I rarely would, would come close to that. But now that we have LinkedIn Learning in place, um, the cost for that is going to be picked up by the college this next year. Uh, but after that, we may have a lab fee that goes along with our courses to cover the cost. Now, even with the lab fee, we've done the math. It's still... Um, a net positive for students in the program if you look at the cost of buying textbooks um, over the course of the program versus um, paying the lab fee to cover the cost of LinkedIn. So, um, you know, that's all to the good too. But there are a couple of courses, like I said before, that for whatever reason, we still have a textbook go that goes along with it. Color theory is one. Um, the color correction course is a little bit um, too advanced for LinkedIn to really handle it properly. So I've uh, got a textbook I use for that. And then Pat has a really great textbook that we've used forever um, for the issues in graphic arts class. It's issues in graphic arts is really um, copyright, uh, contracts, and um, um, pricing for the graphic arts industry. So the Graphic Arts Guild is a, um, a trade association for people who work in the commercial art industry. <clears throat> and it does a really good job of saying, you know, these are best practices for handling these kinds of things that you may encounter when you're working. So Pat's going to continue to use that book as well. And then also gen egg courses, there are requirements that students take things like um, English comp and uh, psych and sociology. So you may have to purchase a, 
or rent textbooks for those courses as well. Okay. Um, other costs that you may run into, uh, we are a graphic arts program. We do expect you to be able to work with pen and, and paper and, and inks and those sorts of things. So <clears throat> you are gonna you are gonna have courses where you have additional costs for just supplies that you should be aware of. Um, generally, they're not too bad cost wise. Again, I, I can't think of a semester where students would spend more than thirty to fifty dollars total in supplies, and that's just me being really conservative. It's usually a lot less for most courses. Um, but rather than me list all those things out here, um, I'm just going to defer to the syllabi for the courses when you get to that point. So you can kind of look ahead and uh, find out what those courses are going to be. Um, also, if you take my web development courses, you'll need to have uh, actual web hosting uh, arrangement arranged for. So uh, if you're taking a web course, I think it makes sense that you would actually have to or learn to be able to develop a website that you can put online. And that's what that is for as well. Um, if you do have any issues with costs, we do have a really good relationship with our foundation <clears throat> and we have been able to help students who have needs. So don't be afraid if you're concerned about something to reach out and, and we'll work with you to make sure that you have what you need in order to be successful in the courses. Okay. Another cost for the program that you should be aware of is in the graphic arts industry, you have probably heard of Photoshop or Illustrator. Um, those are the 800 pound gorillas, or I'm sorry, Adobe is the 800 pound gorilla that kind of dominates the whole industry. There are some newer software packages that are kind of coming along, but um, really you need to be comfortable and able to work with Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, um, and so on and so forth. So we um, have a requirement that students have the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription set up as they take their courses. In fact, if you look at the catalog, um, we have courses named Photoshop, Illustrator in design. So it's pretty clear what software we're going to be using for those particular courses. <clears throat> now, as a student, one of the things I'll say is there's a pretty substantial discount for uh, uh, make error for signing up for that, that to use that software. It's about 50% uh, 50 off the commercial price. So it's about $20, $25 per month uh, when students are working on it. And again, we did the math. Um, even with the purchase of a laptop or a computer and the software and the LinkedIn learning uh, lab fee, which is again being waived this year, um, students still come out ahead. So, um, you know, in, in the end, it's roughly about neutral. It's pretty minimal, the difference between what you would have caught or paid if we had the physical in class and you had to buy books versus what we're doing now. But um, there's a lot of advantages to the direction that we're going. So. We do have a requirement that you have the Adobe Cloud, um, Creative Cloud subscription. Also, some cloud courses may have an additional utility that you need to pick up, but prices on those are pretty reasonable too. And again, I would defer to whatever it says in the syllabus. So, on a second, being dog bobbed. Give me a moment. Leo, go to the bedroom. Okay, I have a German short haired pointer who I swear decides the, um, whenever I'm in the middle of something, that's the best time to check in and see how I'm doing. So bear with me. Um, additional costs, um, you'll need a computer that can run the Adobe Creative Cloud software. Uh, it, it's really a toss up as to whether or not you wanna get a laptop or a desktop computer. One of the things that I would say is that um, you might wanna consider, <clears throat> um, I understand why people want laptops, but usually you can get a slightly better deal if you purchase a desktop com computer versus a laptop. The software is a little bit more um, cutting edge on the desktop side. There's usually about a six to 12 month lag between when stuff is available in a desktop computer versus when stuff is available in a laptop. <clears throat> and then also too, um, you're not gonna be able to use uh, a Chromebook or, or those sorts of things. You're really gonna need a pretty decent computer that's capable of running the Adobe Creative Cloud software. One of the um, points that we made earlier today was that usually if you if you need to purchase a computer, you should look at budgeting about $1,000 to $1,500 for that purchase. That's usually puts you in the price range um, for computers that are able to run the software that'll be able to continue running the software while you're in the program. Um, one of the things we've done is we've worked with the bookstore to um, make sure that they do have computers available for students that are able to run the software there. 
Um, and the nice thing about that too, is you can use your financial aid package to cover those costs as well. Um, another thing I suggest is, I know a lot of people get really excited about getting a computer and getting going, but um, given the way the technology ages, my recommendation is usually wait until late summer before you make a purchase. Uh, there are a lot of back to school deals that are really nice that you might wanna keep in mind as you're um, 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 planning or looking for a computer. So a lot of vendors will actually give discounts to students. Um, and then also too, um, if you hold off on that purchase until that time, um, it should help or it should stay, um, uh, it should continue to be able to run the software during the two years or so that you're in the program. So my recommendation, if you want to get a computer or you're planning on getting a computer, is just, just hold off until, um, you know, late summer. Uh, and Pat and I will actually put out a spec sheet if you're thinking about purchasing one on your own as opposed to going through the bookstore. There's no requirement that you buy your laptop through the bookstore. Um, so we work with students either way. And then also <clears throat> there is, um, it being a graphic arts, graphic design program, uh, you'll need to learn how to work with commercial printing companies. So um, we're in the process of making arrangements for um, uh, students to actually upload their work to a commercial printer so they can have it printed. And then we'll we're still in the process, process of deciding how we're gonna receive that back, whether it'll be shipped to the, the college for us to review or if we'll ship it directly to students. Um, but that will also be in place as well too. There may be some costs with that. Um, we're in the process of trying to figure out how that's gonna work with our budget. So be aware of that. Now, as far as the curriculum goes, we're a two-year program, I said before, if you wanna go full-time, we do have a number of students who go part-time and that's fine too. Um, it does make scheduling a little bit, um, I wouldn't say more complicated, but it's just a different path. So um, if you are planning going part-time, just let us know and we'll help you map out the classes that you need um, so that you're not kind of twiddling your thumbs one semester and then overwhelm the next and so on and so forth. The first semester uh, has a mix of graphic arts classes, art uh, classes, and then, um, yeah, a mix of art and graphic arts classes. Uh, as you see, we have 2D design as a required course. Um, then we have intro to Mac. That's the intro to Mac class is more of a computer literacy course. Uh, when we were in the lab, we had Apple computers. And so it made sense to call it that. But now that students are going to have their own computers and there's no requirement that you buy a Mac versus a Windows machine. Um, <clears throat> I think we're probably going to look at changing the name of that in the near future. Uh, also in that first semester, we put you right on um, the soft, right in with the software. Uh, we'll have you take an Illustrator and Photoshop course. Um, Pat teaches an intro to graphic arts course uh, that kind of gives you an overview of the industry. And then I teach a color theory course to uh, make sure that you're comfortable working with different colors and understand how colors work in the graphic arts um, environment. And then finally, we have a calculations and measurements course. It's a math course that all um, career technical programs uh, have that requirement. Um, and then the next semester, the spring of the set of first year, <clears throat> students have some choices between taking art appreciation or drawing or music appreciation. Um, and then we have required courses in typography and in InDesign. Um, the color correction course that I mentioned earlier was think of it as an advanced Photoshop course. Um, um, and then finally, we have the intro to HTML and CSS course, which is our web first introductory web development course. Starting in the second year in that fall semester, students take English comp or tech writing. And then we have um, them pick between InDesign 2, which is an advanced um, print design uh, class, or they can take packaging design. <clears throat> we'll talk more about why you might want to take one versus the other later on when you get to that point. We have the issues in graphic arts course that I spoke about earlier. That's the contracts, uh, copyright and pricing course. Um, and then also we have content management systems, which is an advanced web course. And then a social media branding course, which deals with creating images for the web um, for advertising and marketing purposes. And then finally, we have a project management course that's starting new this fall. Um, the nice thing about that course is we're actually working with our IT program to put both IT and graphic arts students together in the class so that you can do more complex projects. When you're working as a 
a professional web developer, I'm sorry, as a commercial designer, you're going to be working on teams, you're going to be working with groups, you're going to be part of a larger process. And it's important that you understand how to work with people who have different skill sets. So um, that last semester really is going to um, put you into um, a place where you can prepare to work uh, professionally. Also, we have the portfolio course. Uh, the portfolio course is going to help you actually develop a professional portfolio that you can show to prospective employers or um, um, to potential clients and so on and so forth. We have the tech changes course, which um, does a little bit of polishing before you graduate in terms of um, helping you um, develop a few additional soft skills um, so that you're ready for the workplace. Uh, we have an internship requirement for the program where we actually um, put you on a project working for an outside um, client of some kind. And we can talk more about that later if people have questions about it. And then finally, we have the psychology or sociology requirement. Again, it's a gen ed requirement that um, all students have to satisfy. So that's the, those are the four semesters out of our program. And like I said, if you want to go part time, um, that's great. We have a number of students who do that. Also, a lot of the classes don't have prereqs. So we do have students who decide to take a couple of our classes who are journalism majors or they're IT majors, or um, we've even have a student um, who's been taking some of my photography classes this year, um, who's a um, science ecology major. So get students from all over the place. Um, if you have students or if you are a student who might be interested in taking a couple of courses out of a program, but maybe not the whole thing, certainly talk to us and we'll be happy to work with you on that. <clears throat> now, one of the things that we really strongly believe in is it's important for students to actually interact with each other. So we do have a graphic arts club um, that we've had um, where, where students um, um, get some unique opportunities that you may not see in other student clubs. One of the things that we've done with the Graphic Arts Club is Pat and I, over the years, have gotten a lot of people who have come to us and say, hey, I've got this great project. Do you have any students who might be able to work on it? It's not really an internship sort of situation. And it's, um, occasionally students pick those up for their, inter or for their portfolio course. But um, hold on a second. But... Um, uh, so the Graphic Arts Club is, um, we've kind of set it up like an advertising agency where we have, instead of a club president, we have a project manager, we have people kind of um, orient themselves, so they take up different positions within the clubs, so they can um, kind of specialize in whatever it is they're interested in doing after they graduate. In other words, we have some students who are really interested in the web, so if we have a project that comes to us um, that has a web component, that's what they'll be focusing on. And we'll have um, a lot of students who are mainly interested in print. So again, students who are interested in that will kind of gravitate toward that part. And <clears throat> it's, it's actually been a really successful thing. We've had a lot of fun with it over the years. It gives students some additional practice outside of their courses. And um, um, yeah, it's, it's been really exciting. Students have really enjoyed the process of working with clients outside of a classroom environment. Now, obviously, Pat and I are advisors for the club to make sure that everything goes smoothly, but um, it's, it's been pretty cool. And then um, we also have our students participate in a variety of competitions. Um, the American Advertising Federation is a trade group for people who work in the um, graphic arts industry. And every year they have a, an awards competition um, to see, or a, a competition to kind of see what's the best work that people have been creating that past year. Our students are, um, have been participating in that for a long, long time and been very successful <clears throat> in when, when they're competing. There's actually a student ca uh, category. So our students have competed against students from Western Illinois University, um, Kirkwood, uh, the University of Iowa, University of Dubuque, um, just a whole bunch of regional schools. And, and we've done quite well over the years. I'll just leave it at that. And then the ICADI Awards, uh, the community colleges in Iowa, a couple of years ago, got together to create their own awards, or um, I'm sorry, their own student competition. Um, the Addy Awards are great, but there are some um, concerns that we've had over the years about the awards care, uh, competition for the Addies, mainly um, related to the cost for students to enter work. So um, we got together and came up with our awards, our own um, student competition for uh, community colleges that have a graphic arts 
or related program. And um, Pat and I are uh, two of the original founders, actually, of that competition, Pat more so than myself. But um, yeah, we've had students compete in that and, and been very successful with that, too. And that's probably been in place about five years, wouldn't you say, Pat? Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. Say yeah. five years. Yep. So, okay. So, out of all that stuff, does anyone have any questions? Okay, I asked this question of Rob uh, earlier this week or last week. It's all a blur now, but um, I think I he told me that this would be like a false start. So certain classes will only be, this is my assumption, certain classes will only be available in the fall. And if students miss it in the fall, they have to wait to the next year to pick it up the next fall. Am I correct? No. I mean, you're part right and, and part. Um, you, so some classes. All of our classes run either in the fall or the spring. However, that first year, <clears throat> very few of the classes have a prereq. So if you do have a student who comes to you and says, I'd really like to start and the first chance they have is in the spring, that's fine, but recognize that they'll be a little bit off in terms of the sequence. So they may start that spring with the standards first, uh, I'm sorry, second semester cl classes, <clears throat> but where their classmates would move on to that third semester, they're gonna circle back and, and pick up the first semester classes. It gets a little tricky. We work with students in that situation, but we've still had students do it over the years and, and they've been just fine. So, okay. Oh, and the other thing was we were talking after the meeting earlier today. Uh, I think Rob said that you, somebody said that there were uh, some classes that the program is half full now. Did I, did I hear that right? I'm going to take Rob's word for it. It looks like we're half full, which is great. Um, okay. And we've never been that far along. Well, I'm not going to say never. It's been a long time since we've been this full so early in the school year. So if you've got a student who's um, interested in, in uh, joining our program, I would urge them to get enrolled right away. So the cap that's on the classes is pretty much where we're getting that half full idea, right? Yep. So once we hit the maximum of the class, then no one else can enter and the, the classes as they're listed, correct? Because you know how some people only show up August 15th, right? Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's and been a long time. When I first started, we actually had wait lists for the program. Um, <clears throat> I remember teaching my first year and having students lining up along the wall, hoping somebody would drop that first day. So mm -hmm. um, if we do reach that point, um, we're probably going to have to drop back and think a little bit about how to handle it. Um, it it's a, I don't want to say it's a great problem to have, but um, we, we haven't thought too um, far in that direction. I do know we, we do allow wait lists. Um, if we had maybe one additional student, I think Pat and I would probably flex on it, but we don't, don't want to have a class where we're teaching 40 students. I think if that happened, um, we have some adjuncts who have done some wonderful work for us in the past, we would probably approach them and see if we could open a second section of something, but we're not there yet. So certainly um, put students on a wait list if we do reach that point. Yeah, we want to get every student that we can if we, yeah. so if, it, if we have extras, we'll try to find ways to fit them in. Right. So because I am that person, how will we maintain the wait list and who will be in charge of the wait list? I don't know. We haven't, we haven't really <laughs> contemplated it. Well, um, I'm just asking because, you know, if it happens, we don't want to scurry around at the last minute, although we probably will. But at least if we thought about it, we'll say, oh, if that happens, so-and-so will we'll keep it. Sure, sure. Let me have that conversation with Gabe and Mardell and see what might be the best way to handle that. Yeah, we'll get back with you, to, you know, soon. Yep. Okay. Um, no, it's a good question. Fair point. I, I have to say, I kind of hope we're in that situation, but uh, we're not there yet, so. Well, I'm surprised. Well, I was surprised the students knew about it before I did, because mm -hmm. I did not go to the symposium. I said that to Rob. I didn't make it to the symposium because I didn't realize that there were so many changes happening this fall until after the fact. So yes, I've listened to the recording, but the recordings were kind of, I call it a drive-by more than this type of 
you know, deeper content that you're providing for us today. So thank you for doing it. Sure. And um, I feel better prepared. I don't necessarily want to be the point person for any of it, but I think all of us here, because we get quite a few different people. And I think several of us in the Quad Cities here at, at Scott have already heard from someone who was telling us about the program and we felt kind of in the dark. And so now I feel that we'll be better prepared to at least answer and anticipate some questions. Not that we want to be the authority because we won't be, but we just want to be better prepared. Sure. And, you know, Pat and I are always happy to field any questions that you don't feel like you know the answer to. So if something comes up, just send us an email and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. My, my modality is usually to have the students send an, an email to you and me. Mm -hmm. So then that way I kind of know when it gets answered. And then if it's still kind of out there, then I can follow up. Um, and I tell them to follow up too, because, sure. you know, life happens. Yep. Yep. Hey, that sounds great. Sounds like we're are on you, the same page. Are you guys uh, working over the summer or are you off over the summer? We're on um, 165 day contracts. So we're off during the summer, but um, I've been known to check my email from time to time during the summer, maybe every so day. So once, once May happens or once the semester is over in May, then the email will get answered when you get to it versus, oh, it'll be 20, you know, next week or a week. So I just need to kind of know what to expect. I'd say within, a, within 24 hours. Really? Damn. Yeah. We, we still check our email. We're, we're slaves of habit. Um, That's commitment. So, so send us both an email though, because I mean, we both yeah. do different things and one of us may be available when the other one is. Okay, we'll do. I'm not going to promise 24 hours, but we'll no. probably that's not going to hold you to it. Yep. I can't do 24 hours and I work every day. <laughs> yep. Okay. Does, Brianna, do you have any questions that you might right. like to ask right. us? Nope, you guys answered them all for me. <laughs> okay, all right, good, good. Okay. Well, if you Before think there's something just let us know. Okay. Hey, Brianna, were you in the digital? Um, yes, I was. Digital <laughs> photography class. I, yeah. I recognize your name. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks well, for coming today. See you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming. Um, like I said, if you have any questions you think of after we're done here, feel free to reach out to one of the advisors or ha reach out to us and we'll be um, we'll try to answer any questions that you have. So Pat and I try to be really flexible. We're pretty laid back. Um, I, I don't think that a student could throw anything at us at this point that we haven't seen before. So there's always a first, but um, yeah, we'll work with you if there's some sort of special situation that you want to discuss. All right. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, as I said earlier, I did record this session. So um, how about if I reach out to Nicole to see if we can get that online somewhere and uh, we'll get a link out to people so they can watch it or share it if they have a student or they need more information.